Hey everyone, so I just wanted to give a quick update on this DIY bioreactor project that I'm working on. So if you don't remember from the last video, here is the prototype bioreactor. It looks pretty rough, but it served its purpose as a tool for the rest of the team and I to sort of point to different parts of the bioreactor and say, okay, you know, this jar won't be big enough or we need a different temperature probe or, you know, this Arduino Nano won't be powerful enough and we need to use something like a Raspberry Pi um, or we want a touch screen, you know, those sort of things. So it served its purpose. The other thing that it served is that I 3D printed a stir rod, which you can see is missing from the bioreactor. And that has been thrown in an autoclave a few times and we've proven that 3D printed ABS can in fact be autoclaved, which I did not anticipate which means that we can 3D print the stir rod, which makes the bioreactor much cheaper, and we can also 3D print this lid um, that you can see here, which will make it customizable and affordable. So uh, the first thing that I forgot to mention in the last video is that we've got a pretty good team working on this bioreactor project. So we have a professor from the fermentation facility at my college, um, so he has a lot of experience with uh, running bioreactors and <laughs> purchasing bioreactors. And there's a master's student in that same area in fermentation and biotechnology who will be helping with the project once we, all, once we actually have a bioreactor completed. Um, we have an electrical engineering professor uh, who's also brought on a team of about five senior electrical engineers to work on this project and they will be doing the majority of this work. And then there's me. Um, I'm a senior in biochemical engineering and genetics, and I have a lot of experience with rapid prototyping. So I sort of bridge the gap between the electrical engineers and the biologists. So a few of the things that we've determined that this bioreactor needs, a few design aspects that we decided it needs. Um, first, we need some sort of computer control that will be in the form of Raspberry Pi. We also may need an Arduino as well. We'll see. Of course, we want the internals to be autoclavable. Um, so, you know, I'll go over in a second how we're bridging the or we're tackling that design challenge where we have electrical components and then we also have, you know, parts of this design that need to be put in a high temperature, high pressure, uh, wet environment called an autoclave. So, of course, we need aeration. That's just going to be constant aeration. That will make that much easier. Um, adjustable stirring that will be in the form of a brushless DC motor so that's the same sort of motors that are in quadcopters um, in order to run a brushless DC motor you also need a speed controller um, we'll want a screen uh, we found some screens that were 40 or 50 dollars for a nice touchscreen display so hopefully it'll be touchscreen we need PID controlled heating so if you don't know what PID control is it uh, basically allows you to set a variable in a control system so in this case set a temperature um, and the computer on board will be able to reach that temperature um, without overshooting it and without oscillating around the set point in a perfect world that's that's the the best pid control system and that sounds really easy but when you consider the lag in the system so the lag between the uh, heating element actually heating the bioreactor and then the temperature probe actually sensing the temperature of the broth um, you begin to realize how hard it is to control a heating system um, the the next one is that we want this bioreactor to be very affordable so this is sort of out of um, my own interest i want this to be open source and anybody anybody can make it and modify it so 3D printed parts, of course, they're open source and cheap to make, as well as parts you can order on Amazon or, you know, somewhere ubiquitous online. So first I'm going to go over the design of the autoclavable part of the bioreactor. So here's what the lid will look like. We'll need a motor uh, adapter to hold the, the brushless DC motor. And then we're going to want a septa, so um, a septa is sort of a self-healing port where you can inject um, 
you know, nutrients or, you know, uh, something to induce the cells inside, or you can take samples from the bioreactor. Um, another thing we'll need, of course, is the temperature sensor port and then the port for the air. So the way that will look is with the temperature probe, um, what most bioreactors do on the market. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention, this is gonna be a one liter size. Usually bioreactors that are one liter are upwards of $10,000. So I want to aim for this project to be less than $200. So hopefully we can do that. Anyway, with the temperature probe, we want to have a stainless steel tube that's sealed on the end. So the stainless steel, of course, can be autoclaved, um, and the outside of this tube will always stay sterile. However, the inside of the tube, since it's never going to be touching the inside of the reactor, we can just drop in a temperature probe inside of the snug stainless steel tube, um, and then that's taken care of. The next thing is the stir bar, so the or the stir rod. So the stir rod will, of course, be autoclaved. We found that the ABS, the 3D printed ABS, can withstand the autoclave temperature and pressures. So we'll just be able to snap on the motor, which will be nice. For the air, we'll just have a tube, um, and that tube will be autoclavable. We might want a bubble stone on the bottom. Not sure about that yet. And then this is a, a an sterile air filter so the pore size on this is really 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 small um, and it can also be autoclaved so when we want to actually attach the air supply we can just attach it onto the sterile air filter um, and not worry about the outside of this tube uh, being unsterile because it will be sterilized once it passes the sterile filter as far as the uh, electronics side of this bioreactor goes, we'll just have a separate box um, with an air pump, of course, to provide the air. Um, a touchscreen display, potentially some buttons in order to set different um, aspects of the control system, and then a wire harness that goes to our temp probe and motor. On the inside, we'll probably we definitely will need a Raspberry Pi, potentially an Arduino, and definitely a speed controller to control this brushless DC motor. So that's about all the aspects of this uh, DIY bioreactor that we'll be working on. If you have any uh, suggestions for um, things to add on, because this is sort of the simplest version that we could imagine working properly. Um, and we're planning on having additional add-ons in the future if we finish this part. So if you have any suggestions for add-ons of this bioreactor, or if you have any reason <laughs> to tell me why I'm completely wrong with uh, some of these assumptions or some of the components that I'm using, please let me know in the, in the comments. Um, that'd be very helpful. So anyway, thanks for watching. Have a good one.